Hello and welcome to this first lecture of second week. Uh, if you remember last week we talked about the structure of the brain, how 10 to the power 11 neurons with the 10 to the power 15 synapses form a huge network in the brain and this how did the, these neurons grow under the influence of experience and external inputs, how genetics and epigenetics play amidst themselves and uh, the brain almost taking lot of sensory input integrates and differentiates and gives you a sense of identity and self. So, just to briefly revise that and I will show you these figures. So, this is what the brain is. So, as we, you remember these are these are frontal lobe, this is a parietal lobe, temporal, occipital, you can see it here also this is occipital, temporal, parietal, frontal. So, parietal lobe receives all signals from outside touch, pain, heat and temporal lobe essentially sound, this is for vision Front and all this data which goes in through these networks is translated compared with whatever maps and memories are existing and uh, is presented to the frontal lobe where a decision is taken whether to act on it or to uh, think about it. And just to show you in more details, this is this is there is a concept of homunculus. At one point of time people used to think there is a little man sitting inside the brain who could see everything, who could see whatever is coming in, but there is no little man. So, what we call a homunculus, if you look at this is somatosensory cortex, this is the representation of eye, nose, the rest of the body. So, you see the face and the hand is represented more than anything else. So, actually if you just put this size and make a man, he will have a very huge face, very large and big hands and rest of the body will be truncated. Even the feet will be very small. I See, it is all the smartness of evolution. You can think why are feet so small and why is the hand so big and why is the face so big. Think over, probably because if the feet had been very broad to make a stabilized body standing on two feet would have been very difficult. So, like putting in like a center of gravity of the body, your hands have you got free from when you were walking on the four millions of years back to your hands being free. So, you do most of the things with your hand. So, your hands have to be sensitive to lot of touch, pain, heat plus lot of external input especially for the mind goes through your face. You have how see how many senses are there, touch is spread throughout the body, but eyes, ears, smell, taste everything is concentrated. So, face naturally has to have a larger representation and that is what it is. So, these are the type of representations in the brain through which these networks form maps. We will talk about these maps later on, but these maps are the real memories. Now, imagine suppose you did not have memory, any system of forming memories, how do they form we will talk about it, then what would you compare things with? every sound every time will be new to you and you will really not know it is a predator or it is a good thing or it is a bad thing. Similarly, these are tonotopic and topographic. As I told you last time, the whatever sound goes into your ear, it is finally from that beautiful membrane which is in the inside the ear, which separates frequencies. As the sound comes in a pressure wave, the frequencies are separated, higher frequencies represented, so this membrane is like this and it almost falls on this. So, when this membrane moves, 
it actually impinges on this hair cells. This converts it to electrical signal. So, the higher frequencies at the are at the baseline and the lower frequencies. So, this is structure is very tightly fixed and that is how it gives you higher frequency. This is slightly loose, but actually every time it moves it puts pressure on this hair cells and this generates electric current sends it to the neuron. Similar thing in the eye, see this, this is the pattern of the eye. What comes from here, I will just try to trace it. It comes from here, it goes to the structure called thalamus, if you remember I talked about it, where there is a representation according to the features from left eye and red right eye, then left eye and then right signals are going. From here it goes to occipital, there is this layer V3, V2, 1, where depth, edges, movement, everything is separated. And from here again an image is formed which is sent to deeper lobes, to temporal lobe, which is if you remember I told what is it you are seeing. And there is another direction which goes to parietal lobe, where, where is it located. Now it is important, here also if you see in the sound frequency is separated. But signal also goes to certain areas which control movement. This whole thing is integrated somewhere in this area. From here, so somewhere here the whole thing is integrated and signals are sent to areas like cerebellum to frontal lobe to decide on whether you want to turn your head. You will not know whether if you do not know where it is coming from you will not turn your head. So, the signal which is coming from sound from touch, from vision is integrated and differentiated not only to realize what it is all about, but it is also sent to deeper structures of brain which will decide whether you want to move towards it and what reaction you have to give it to it. It is such a finely balanced system. So, we will drop these networks and how do they do for the time being. So, uh, if you remember I told you about various levels. So, we are talking about the behavior the reaction from outside, the senses and then the whole brain and the networks trying to form a composite image of your existence, <coughs> but let us leave it at that for the time being. How do they do it? Let us take few jumps down into the deeper structure. Brain is a network of electrochemical activity is a continuous electrical activity in neurons, we will talk about it when we talk about electricity in brain, but the switches are chemicals and these chemicals are like, if you remember we talked about synapse, I will show you what a synapse is. This is a synapse, this is a synapse, this is a synapse. So, what is happening is that this is a neuron, if you remember we talked about dendrites and exon, electrical signal is coming here and these are something called receptors. So, the, just to show you, there are, these are chemicals which are formed in the cell body, like this is a cell body, these chemicals are formed here and they come down to exon, where they come down this and go to the dendrite. This small gap which you see, this gap, between this and this is 0 0.5 milliseconds, but these chemicals are called neurotransmitters. So, the electrical signal which is coming here at this synapse which is a gap between two neurons, the axon and the dendrites or here you see the motor end plate which is the muscle, this gap is how electricity cannot jump unless you are talking about quantum tunneling and all which we are not sure about because this current you will discover as we talk is not the typical electron current which you see in metals. This is the ionic current, 
it comes these and triggers the secretion of these neurotransmitters through this gap. Now, look at it. So, you see this is electrical current, if you can see this there is a, it is coming down, here there is a calcium outside in the fluid around that, this calcium suddenly goes in as the current comes and, and how does it go in, because you see these green structures, these are called receptors, receptors are of two type or, or rather let me put it in a different way, they are channels. As I told you this is a neuron, there is a channel here, this is a neuron, there is a channel here. These channels are of two type, one which are voltage gated, this. These open up, these channels open up with the difference of sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium the voltage difference with these ions create. And then there are other channels which are like uh, ligand gated. So, these are ion channels, this one if you see this and there are channels which will op open up only when a neurotransmitter combines to them, which are ligand gated. So, it is like this, these are receptors sitting here they are waiting for this thing to come and as these neurotransmitters are secreted, these receptors catch hold of it. So, what happens? The receptors bind, moment they bind to the protein and these are all protein receptors, because if you look at it, it is like there is a lipid layer, lipid is fat simply, this lipid layer is insulated, current cannot pass, but these are proteins which so, through this sodium potassium can transfer, through the pressure because of disbalance of uh, presence of sodium potassium on both sides or through enzymes. So, moment this receptor comes and suppose it binds to one of the proteins here, it creates a mechanical distortion and the whole thing opens up. Once it opens up the sodium rushes in, by the moment it opens sodium rushes in and the moment sodium rushes in again there is the electricity which starts on the other side. So, between two electrodes these neurotransmitters jump the current. I hope you understand it, current comes, calcium goes in, it binds to this small things called vesicle within which these neurotransmitters are stored. They come from the cell body are stored here, once the current comes the calcium binds. So, this vesicle moves towards the edge of this, so there is a structure like this, current comes, the vesicles move towards the edge and suddenly they open up and as they open up, this thing is secreted into what you call a synaptic cleft, this small uh, gap, this is small gap between the dendrite and axon that is in angstroms and they go bind to these channels ligand gated or and then they op opens up again the sodium rushes in another current goes down from here. So, this is why we call it say it is a electric electrical chemical network. The electrical activity coming from one set of neurons and passing on to the other is regulated by these chemicals and that is why it is a chemical switches. The quantity and it there it is very important because the whole of psychiatry survives on this. We know how to modulate this neurotransmitters by giving drugs. The level of these neurotransmitters decides how many receptors have, and it is a very dynamic process. Suppose if there is a suppose chemical X and it has to be present in a certain quantity in a certain area of the brain, but suppose it decreases. So, the number of receptors, so what this is what we call it as a, let me see if I can tell you, this is the whole area is called presynaptic and this is postsynaptic. This is presynaptic, this is postsynaptic. If the number of chemicals which has to be secreted 
decreases over time, then the number of receptors who want to catch it will increase. Because obviously, they have to have that certain number of uh, neurotransmitter to keep it firing. When it gets distorted, if for some reason for illness and maybe depression or some vitamin deficiency, then the number of chemicals which are made in the presynaptic neuron decrease. So, what the brain does? It increases the number of receptors, so that even a single molecule does not go waste. Otherwise, if there are many receptors, there is a less number of neurotransmitters secreted, the whole brain will, the, the, the post synaptic neuron will catch it. But if it decreases, then they have receptors have to be more, right. So, plus once the electrical firing goes on, there is always a feedback mechanism which goes up to it, tells that okay, fine, the number of chemical which is coming is okay for us, electrical activity is going fine. So, the factory can decrease the production. It is like a market where you have to supply certain things. If the supply is less, obviously you will always see there is more number of people to catch it. If the supply is more, you will always see there is less number of people, because you are not seeing them. They are always there. This maybe there are 100 people and they consume 100 items which have to be delivered. An item suddenly so, you never realize that everybody is getting it, unless you really measure one by one. Here you cannot measure one by one, because it is in such a vast scale. So, but if you suddenly decrease it, you are they say only 70, so, suddenly you will see more 30 people are there, which is, so they will become conspicuous, they will suddenly become, those 30 people will get active. So, these 30 who are lying peacefully will become active, and then the market will give a feedback, they produce more or it will give a negative feedback, okay, there is enough, there are 120 of them, we cannot use it. So, these are called positive and negative feedbacks, which occur at a very, very neuronal level, micro level and also at a very, very high network level. We will talk about those networks. So, I will just briefly try in this lecture go to and tell you what, what is happened, what is happening actually, because this is very important. One concept is this feedback zero transmitter, pre-synaptic, the other is excite, excitatory and inhibitory. All of these chemicals do not go and trigger off electrical activity. Some chemicals go and actually inhibit the activity, inhibit the activity of the post-synaptic neuron, because uh, so this game of excitation and inhibition is the real game in the brain, which keeps neuron firing or not firing. This is just another example to show you. So, precursor in the cell body, these are, they are enzymes, they are chemicals which catalyze, they transmit substance, they either, this is inhibitory. So, inhibitory will send a chemical, which will decrease the firing, which may actually close the channel. Some of them, which are open also are closed. And here is the list of drugs, which you do not have to really bother about it. These are some of the, all chemical reactions, which are going on in the cell body. Now, this is a typical receptor. This is extracellular space, the space outside the neuron. ACH is one of the, uh, so few of the most important neurotransmitters or neuromodulators, you can call them are acetylcholine, norepinephrine, GABA, glycine, glutamate, serotonin and dopamine. Now, you can ask me whether each neuron has one neurotransmitters. There are areas in brain, which are very dense in certain thing, like one area locus cerulus has more noradrenaline, norepinephrine uh, cell bodies one area has more acetylcholine, one has more, four or five of them have more dopamine. These cell areas, where there is a dense uh, presence of one neurotransmitter, have projections of neuron all over the brain. But there are most neurons, otherwise have presence of multiple neurotransmitters, and there is a fine interplay, which goes on between the excitatory, inhibitory. Each one of them has a receptor on the post-synaptic thing. So, you see this, this acetylcholine, from extracellular space, it goes, this is called a ligand gated, ligand binding and this is a neural membrane. 
I told you if you remember this is lipid which is insulated, this is protein, lipid by 2 layers of lipid and protein. All sodium potassium from here, here see this is the balance. So, like this has 5 units and acetylcholine binds here, it changes the configuration of it as it goes and sodium starts going in, gate open. As it, sodium goes in, it changes the, the electrical triggers a potential difference which triggers a different type of thing. Uh, so, this is the basic mechanism at a very micro level which is the basis of life. If this neurotransmitter business shuts, shuts off, if this movement of sodium potassium uh, shuts down, I think that is death. We have not been able to define it, but if you see brain death, this movement of sodium, of, of potassium, of chloride managed through these neurotransmitters, if this activity shuts off that is brain death at a very basic and interestingly this is not a phenomenon which is happening only in uh, humans. This is a phenomena which you see in animals and maybe simpler um, animals and maybe some mem membranes. So, what has nature smartly evolved in the, in the simplest form? If you talk of just one neuron, each neuron has a history and but each neuron also sacrifices its own history in the assembly of neurons. Obviously, if you have to have 10 to the power 11, so each neuron nature has very smartly created a membrane. Now, membrane may differ in some in humans this is bilipid, in other nervous system you find it like this, there may be variation, but it is formed of lipid and protein. It, it is the partition between outside and inside with receptors which can keep changing and allowing electrolytes and ions to keep going in and out and that is the essential information exchange. Energy that you require energy, brain requires almost 20 to 30 percent of the whole glucose which body, the energy requirement of the body which is a huge number and it is a warm moist thing it uses energy for this activity because there is a, I so will give you an example, there is an enzyme called sodium potassium ATPase. This enzyme pushes 3 sodium outside and 2 inside to keep the balance. Otherwise, if you just leave it open doing nothing, there is a lot of, there is a lot of potassium outside, potassium will all go in automatically. It keeps going with the, some of these channels have, have leakage. So, as potassium goes in something has to balance, the so sodium is pumped out. So, these type of balances, you just remember this because when we talk of electricity, we will need to. So, these are these I said, this is a dopaminergic neurons. The dopamine I told you, you see these areas, these are the areas where this most dopamine and each of these systems, they have huge projection to everywhere to this neocortex, to olfactory, to everywhere. I mean, it is like, you remember this substantia nigra, this is the area involved in very common disease called Parkinson's. This is noradrenergic. You see one area, locus cerulus has huge projection everywhere. And they, they, these are the neurons which always keep sending uh, the same set of it and it has an importance because this system it is involved in attention, noradrenergic system. Dopamine is involved in lot of things which you call the reward center of the brain. Reward center means if you do something and if you feel pleasure, you will keep doing it again and again. That is one of the basis of emotion also. This is called reward and if you do something and your brain does not feel pleasure, it will next time prevent you from doing it. This is also sort of emotional map or a memory or whatever you want to call it. So, that is why nature has evolved it in a such a way that okay, this system will control the pleasure pain, this will control the attention span. When we will talk of sleep, we will talk more about this. Serotonergic neuron, all your 
appetitive and repetitive behavior that you explore, you want to eat and you want to hold and you want to keep doing again and again. Your mood state a lot depends on this thing called serotonin and these, so you can see the commonality, the whole see the projection starting from one place from deep brain it is going to the whole thing. This is also going. So, there is a fine interplay of these neurochemicals in controlling your attention, in controlling your mood state, in controlling your uh, reward punishment, in controlling the way you do react, the way you think, way you explore things. And uh, a style choline is one which has which is also important for memory. You must have heard of an illness called dementia and dementia is like uh, the most the nu nucleus which is the most damage is so this is the whole list of it you can read it later hypothalamic in addition to this five six big uh, glutamate is excitatory because when we'll talk of memory the and when we talk of network the chemical switch in those network of learning and memory is glutamate that switches the whole firing again and again. You do something, your network learns to do it, certain on that certain network in the brain, you repeat it, the more you do it, the more your brain will keep it as a memory. That is managed through glutamate. And then there is a whole host of this um, chemicals, which are present in gut also. So, there is a brain gut axis. So, there is an illness called irritable bowel syndrome. It is the same disturbance of serotonin here and here. Sometimes a lot of IBS patients are cured with actually antidepressants, but this is the smartness of body and nature is very economical. It, nature if it can survive through one model will not create another model. There may be variation to it. So, with the same chemistry it manages heart, your heart rate goes fast with the stylcholine or noradrenaline. So, vagus nerve which is goes from here inhibits it. If you give chemicals which antagonize the receptor, so we know there is something called agonist, there is something called antagonist. Antagonist will go and block. So, this is a whole list of things which slides are here and you can always go as I said. So, just to wrap it up, because this was the type of overview which I wanted to give you about the chemistry of the brain. And uh, this is a summary, this is a summary which you can see. So, there are small molecule neurotransmitter, there is a there are amino acids, there are neuroactive peptides. So, this is a whole gamut of why does nature need so many things? I think it is for fine tunings, because if we, if nature does not fine tune, lot of this if you see the glutamate here as I said is excitatory. And, uh, and GABA is inhibitory. So, there is an interplay of this excitatory and inhibitory to regulate the firing. So, I will end at this, you can always find this type of list and maybe at the next lecture, we will see what this all chemical switches do. We will also talk about the electrical activity of the brain, then probably that will give you an idea of how this whole network functions. Uh, yeah, I mean that's it. Thank you.